Hello info person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss a somewhat unusual and somewhat unexpected discovery of what scientists refer to as a dark cloud. An almost entirely invisible cloud that you see right there, now referred to as EOS cloud, that seems to be located 300 light years away from us and was discovered by using a completely new method. A method that now allows scientists to detect these clouds all over the galaxy. Which at least in theory will help them solve many different mysteries, including the mysteries of missing matter and the mysteries in regards to the galactic formation and evolution of stars. But let me actually discuss some of the details first and provide some of the explanations for why this matters. And here we have to start with where exactly this is located and why this is important. This is technically part of the so-called local bubble. An enormous formation at least thousand light years across that contains a lot less material inside compared to everything else. And in one of the recent videos in the description, you can actually learn more about exactly what was discovered here and how we believe this bubble was formed. In a nutshell though, this is a result of tens and possibly hundreds of supernova happening all at once approximately 15 million years ago. And well, it just so happens that the sun is currently right in the center. With the edge of this bubble containing a lot of different molecular clouds, many of them currently creating stars and many of them being some of the most active star forming regions in the vicinity of planet Earth. And this is where we find many different famous stars that are going to go supernova soon, including Betelgeuse. And even though now we understand the local bubble a little bit better, when it comes to these molecular clouds, there are still a lot of different mysteries. And specifically mysteries in regards to their evolution and in regards to why some of them start forming stars, some of them don't, and of course what happens to them at the end. But we do know that many of these molecular clouds seem to be constantly assembled and constantly destroyed. So basically all of them go through a kind of a cycle with most of the data from the Milky Way and from the nearby galaxies, suggesting that a typical cloud usually starts to produce stars when it reaches certain density and when it starts forming certain clumps. And this usually happens when something disturbs these clouds, such as some kind of a collision or emissions from a supernova. And so once the cloud has enough mass and once it starts forming these over densities, this is when it starts to produce stars as individual dense regions collapse under gravity and create star forming clusters. And ironically this is a super destructive process. As you can see all of these stars start to actually emit a lot of energy which eventually disrupts the cloud and even destroys it in the process. And so this whole cloud will eventually result in a star cluster that practically has no gas inside. And here only 2% of the entire mass of the cloud are going to be assembled into stars. 98% basically escapes dispersing across the galaxy. And in the Milky Way, every single year approximately 150 million solar masses of gas goes through this entire process. But only a small fraction ends up producing stars. Except that, as I mentioned, this is technically a cycle. Following the dispersion of this gas, it does cool down again and very likely returns back to the galaxy to try to form stars again. And while a lot of this gas has now been traced in the region you see right here. As a matter of fact, a lot of those regions you see that contain red, those are molecular clouds currently forming stars. But not all of these regions are easily visible. As a matter of fact, based on previous calculations, it was always assumed that there seems to be a lot of mass still missing. Now here we're not talking about dark matter, we're talking about regular matter, regular gas. At least half of the gas was always difficult to detect and was actually unclear where it seems to be. Now in some of the previous studies we've discussed potential detections in between galaxies, but here for the first time we actually seem to have something really close to us. And in this case this is a somewhat bizarre discovery. And bizarre and I guess unusual because technically if you could actually see this cloud it would be approximately this big. This is an enormous object. It seems to contain over 2000 solar masses of hydrogen and could thus in theory produce at least 40 solar masses worth of stars. Now let's talk about why this is so exciting for astronomers and how exactly this was discovered. Now first of all it's really important to understand that generally when it comes to hydrogen clouds they're not particularly easy to find. Now things like nebulae we can usually see pretty well because they're ionized and they do release a lot of light that's visible but a molecular hydrogen is much more difficult to find. Here we're talking about basically H2. This neutral gas barely produces any emissions, but is also extremely important because 
This is your primordial hydrogen that traveled for approximately 13.8 billion years and existed since the beginning. And so even though normally neutral hydrogen emits what's known as the hydrogen line or emissions of 1.4 gigahertz in frequency, overall this emission is extremely weak and makes it super challenging to trace everything or to create these beautiful maps. And so instead, in the last few decades, scientists discovered a kind of a shortcut. They realized that normally, in a typical molecular cloud, for every 10,000 atoms of hydrogen, there is usually at least one atom of carbon and oxygen, which tends to form carbon monoxide and is much, much easier to see and much easier to trace. And so in most clouds, this is basically the main tracer. Pretty much all of the clouds we've discovered so far, and pretty much this entire map around the local bubble, was formed by looking at carbon monoxide and not hydrogen. But there's a problem with this technique. The problem being that, theoretically, there should still be quite a lot of hydrogen that's not associated with carbon and oxygen, mostly because it's basically primordial. Or in other words, because it was never affected by anything and does not contain anything except for just a little bit of helium. With this eventually being referred to as the dark clouds or dark hydrogen. Something that was technically hypothetical for many years. But the researchers behind this recent study realized that hydrogen can technically become visible if it's in presence of more powerful stars or if there's something else near it, such as for example glowing nebula. Or in other words, some of this previously invisible hydrogen should become visible if there's a source of UV radiation somewhere in the vicinity. And it just so happens that this new cloud is essentially surrounded by other clouds and a lot of other powerful stars. And so in order to test this hypothesis, researchers used some of the data from an older satellite, specifically STSAT-1, that was launched back in 2003, that collected a lot of UV data over the years. This was a South Korean ultraviolet space telescope. And here the focus was on far ultraviolet fluorescence that should technically be producible by hydrogen molecules if they're affected by UV radiation coming from somewhere else. In other words, they were focusing on glowing hydrogen. Now, because most of the hydrogen doesn't usually have UV sources near it, in general, this molecular hydrogen will usually remain kind of invisible. But here, because of the structure known as the North Polar Spur, we get a very unique condition. You can see the structure visible right there, and this is one of the most well-known and one of the largest structures in the entire galaxy. A giant cloud of polarized emissions that seems to be produced by ionized gas inside some kind of a strong magnetic field. And whatever is happening inside the structure seems to make hydrogen inside EOS cloud glow in the ultraviolet light. Here the name EOS is after ancient Greek goddess of the dawn. And in this case, North Polar Spur even seems to change its shape. As you can see from this image, it's somewhat crescent shaped, with the overall outline actually kind of following the emissions from the North Polar Spur. And though the origin of the spur itself are still not known, but believed to be the result of various supernova, the energy and radiation coming from it seem to be directly affecting EOS cloud. But technically affecting it in a somewhat negative way. Because just like during star formation here, all of these powerful emissions are resulting in a phenomenon known as photodissociation. And so even though it's making this cloud glow in fluorescent light, it's also breaking it apart slowly evaporating all of the hydrogen with a rate of about 600 solar masses every million years. And so in about 5.7 million years, it's most likely going to disappear. Which means that it probably doesn't actually have enough time to form any stars, and all of this gas will have to first cool down before it has another chance to form stars in the future. But I guess the main surprise here is how massive and how large this structure actually is, and of course, how close it is to the solar system. As I mentioned previously, this is over 2000 solar masses in mass and is also approximately 85 light years across. But in terms of science, what makes this study exciting is the fact that this cloud was even discovered and the fact that it was possible to measure the rate of dissociation, which will most likely allow researchers to work out how most of this interstellar gas eventually forms into stars and how it helps galaxies evolve over time. And so because of this discovery, it's now possible to find even more such clouds, which will obviously help us understand how Milky Way evolved, but also helping us discover a lot of this additional hidden gas everywhere, because chances are there are even more clouds producing similar emissions. With one of the follow-up studies also focusing on the idea of star formation. And while right now it looks like there are no signs of previous star formation, with the chances of future star formation being relatively slim. In other words, there's a high chance that this entire cloud 
will eventually just dissipate into nothingness. And here we're talking about a lot of gas. 2000 solar masses. But at least for now, that's basically all we know. Although I'm sure that because of this research and because of some of the recent discoveries about the local bubble, we're going to be hearing more about this in some of the future studies. And mostly because it was really in the last five years or so that we actually finally started to understand so much more about this local bubble with astronomers finally mapping it in detail. And once again, in one of the previous videos, you can learn more about this because there have been some really exciting discoveries, including these really bizarre tunnels that we currently don't understand. But once there are some additional discoveries or once we learn something else, we'll come back and discuss the local bubble once again. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.